Hey YouTube, welcome back to Property Finance and today I'm going to bring you week 4 of the Dividend Challenge. And if you guys are new to the channel, the Dividend Challenge where I invest $200 every week into my portfolio no matter how good or bad the market is. Our goal is to reach 20000 by the end of the year and right now we're using M1 Finance as the main platform for our Dividend Challenge. But uh, I opened my Webull account, um, we're going to go over that today, see if it opened up and if the money transferred over. And maybe in the future we might be using Robinhood. Some of my personal investments are in Robinhood right now so I might withdraw all that out and then start fresh on Robinhood as well. But um, until then, we'll just go over M1 Finance today and Weeble. I'm from California and yesterday, Monday, the governor made a statement that churches and stores can start opening up, up to 25% capacity, and it's based on the counties. So pretty much California is slowly opening back up. I'm not sure how this affects on the global scale and on stocks, but I guess we'll see today. And yesterday was also a holiday. It was um, Memorial Day, so stocks were closed yesterday. So that's why I'm making this video today and it's gonna release on Wednesday. Let's just get into it. Um, last week, I think we we're up $150. So if we're up again, it'll be pretty cool. I know it's like, it takes a little long to log in too. And oh shit, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> we're up $400, $430, that's crazy. Up 5.25%, um, total of $11,205.67. My total that I invested in was $10,800. It looks like I have $2.78 of a dividend right here. Um, I'll go over that when we go to the activity, but that's crazy. Up $431. It's been a pretty good week since I've invested so far. Let's go over the last seven days since I don't look at the account. Cause whatever you guys see is when I see it, this is live. The day already closed, so nothing should be moving anymore. So let's see here. As you can see, this is where we were last week on May 18th. That was the last video of dividend week three. Um, I was at $10,744. And uh, we can go to the right here. And uh, let's actually go to the week view. The lowest point in the week was on May 21st. It was at $10,793, but it was still over $10,744, which was May 18th. So we're still up here about $50. And you scroll to the right, and it jumped from uh, Friday to now to today. So let's look at the pies here. So for the aggressive ETF pie, I'm up $214.41, up 5.24%. Um, let's go to the pie. And everything's green. The highest being uh vb which is 9.99 percent at 60 dollars and 52 cents and the lowest is shy which i'm up a measly penny uh zero percent let's see the last week here and the last week the highest gain was vnq at 6.16 percent um i don't have five percent in this this was the real estate one i didn't have much uh, uh, hopes in this one so i only put five percent but um i guess i was mistaken i should put more um, real estate is kind of booming right now it's still a buying market and one of my roommates just bought a house about two three weeks ago it went through he's gonna move out in end of the june if you guys are looking for a place to live hit me up <laughs> he's moving out in late june he's been living with me for about uh four years now uh, um he was actually my ex-co-worker and he moved in so i'm really gonna miss that guy but yeah it's a buying market he said that when he was buying the house there were about four or five other offers in my mind that was crazy because like aren't you guys scared that you might get laid off and like um, not have money to pay off the house and you might lose everything in my personal opinion I wouldn't be buying a house right now I would hold off until maybe next year when the housing market kind of crashes due to people not being able to pay mortgages A lot of houses are gonna go on the market. It's gonna flood real quick like 2008 But maybe it won't because we're getting a lot of these stimulus checks and a lot of these unemployment checks So people are still able to pay off their houses. Maybe that's why it's still kind of a buying market, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to crash eventually in one or two years. I will save money to buy it then. But on the flip side, mortgage rates are like the lowest it's ever been ever. One of my other friends, he refinanced his house to like under 3.5%. And that's like unheard of all time history low. And he did it without buying any points or paying any closing fee, which is absurd. I refinanced my house back in like late September because it was kind of dropping already and I had to pay about six seven thousand in closing costs I might refinance too um taking off his deal because his deal was paid zero and just get a lower rate for no reason and also I'm kind of early on my mortgage I'm not like halfway done paying with it so the repercussions aren't that big but yeah it's based on what you guys are personally trying to do with your house and um how you're trying to uh, navigate with your future so something that might work for me might not work for you so just doing your own research but yeah I'm actually really surprised that real estate is still doing pretty well let's move on to the next pie the next pie is the dividend hunting pie. I'm up $153.22, a total of 7.5%. Um, let's go into it. And everything's green for this one too. Highest being AGNC up 10.51%, a total of $106.26. Let's go over the week, see if anything changed. Uh, everything's about the same. So let's go back to the last pie, um, which is my growing pie. I'm up a total of $63.68 up 3.07 percent everything's green except for the gsk i'm down uh five dollars 80 cents total of 1.46 percent i might be selling my starbucks and at t 
soon because uh, my Webull account has those already. And I don't see the point of buying the same stock in three different platforms. I have AT&T on Rob my Robinhood too. So I might just liquidate everything and buy something else. Um, let's go to the activity. So I got a dividend of DHY at $2.33. I didn't even know I was getting this one. Um, it's because of the portfolio here. Yeah, it dropped on um, May 14th. I didn't even know that. That's probably why it went down because I bought it on the 11th and May 15th. Yeah, that's why it went down. I didn't even notice. <laughs> and then I got Starbucks dividend of 55 cents. Um, when did that drop? I didn't even notice. I need to keep track of my M1 Finance's dividend calendar, which I should. Um, oh, it dropped on the 6th. Huh. How about that? I only have three and a half shares, hence the low dividend. I believe, uh, let me see, let me double check again. The dividend dropped right when I opened the account. Yeah, May 6th. So this is probably when I barely opened the account because I opened the account on May 1st. And um, I only had $4,000 in that account. So probably I had less than a share at the time. So that's why I only had getting 55 cents. So I probably had a share and a half. That's why I have 55 cents. So let's check the overall holdings and percentages. So if you guys notice that this number is actually different from my portfolio number, the 431.31 cents is because um, this unrealized gain is just the gains of the, the stock. And then the total here comes from the earned dividends and the gains. So that's why you get the $431.31. But my question is that why the $28.42? Because in my activity, I only have two dividends and that's not $28. So I'm guessing they're calculating future dividends. Um, I'm not too sure, but let me know in the comments below how this is working because that's kind of weird. I might do something with my referral because I think my referral is $25 if I remember correctly, or maybe it's a dividend that I'm getting in the future and they're just calculating it since I already meet the ex dividend date. Um, but we'll see in a couple of days, see if this, this uh, activity changes. Also another discrepancy I see here is that the percentage here, 8.12% isn't the same as percentage on the portfolio, it says 10.51%. I did the math earlier and this is the correct number. So if you want to see the true percentages, I think you should go to holdings. I'll try to figure out what why this number is higher than this number next week and I'll tell you, I'll let you guys know. Because if you do this math real quick, let me punch it in for you guys. Uh, 106.76 divided by 13.14.15. Um, so that's the percentage difference, so you plus one. They multiply 1314.15, you get 1420.91. So this is the correct amount, 8.12%. So I don't know where this 10.51% comes from. I'll let you guys know and I'll get back to you guys. But anyways, let's go back to the holdings. The top three gains money-wise is um, AGNC, VOO, and VV. These two obviously because they have the highest slice in the pie, so they have the most gains. So I usually like to look at the highest percentage-wise because that's what really matters. So AGNC is 8.12%. Is anything higher than that? Um, nope. And the second highest is uh, VB, which is small capital. Yeah. So let's look at the lowest three. Um, the lowest three is GSK, which is pharmaceutical, down a total of 2.38%, SHY, which is 0%, and Exxon, which is 0.76%. So yeah, that's pretty much it for M1 Finance. Uh, pretty pretty good overall. Let's try to look at my Webull account. Um, let's see if it's active. So I did play around Weeble a little bit on my phone. It's pretty robust system, I'd say. It's able to draw lines and graphs and um, it has more data than Robinhood does. So I think it's obviously more of a higher platform than Robinhood. Robinhood is like super entry. It just has the bare minimum and um, it's very user friendly. This seems more like a day trader kind of system, kind of like Think or Swim or TD Ameritrade. So at first glance, it was pretty overwhelming, but let's see if it, my money deposited. And it did hit, it's right here, $1,000 buying power but I have not received my transfer yet. I transferred all my stocks from Merrill Edge. It's about a $6,000 portfolio. So it should be coming here. I said five to eight days. Um, the free stock doesn't come until this $1,000 hit. They just give me the instant buying power for right now. And in four or five days, it'll actually be here. So actually it hasn't been pulled from my checking account yet. I think Robinhood does this too, where they just let you play with $1,000 while they wait for the money to come in. Cause they are assuming you're good for the $1,000. Also my free stock isn't shown here, but I can show you my phone. I got this dinky, uh, let me see you guys see it. I got this dinky GNW stock for $3.11. Um, I think my friends got like $25 stocks. I'm supposed to get two stocks. Hopefully it's more than $3. Uh, let me show you like, what I meant, like robust system. Like, look at this. This is like compared to Robinhood. Like we don't have any of this in Robinhood. Um, this is like the real deal. We're not in Kansas anymore, boys. I think this is kind of too much for you guys as a viewer to kind of see what's going on. So I think I might be using my phone for this, for the overviews of every week. Cause you guys don't need to know what I'm doing. Just you just kind of just want to know the results, right? Um, if I'm losing money. <laughs> but that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Let me know down below if you guys are in the green. I'm surprised I'm in the green. And lastly, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel like this content. And ring the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.